Tell me a little bit about Nashville and what it means to you. Nashville's a, a fantastic journalism town. At the time I worked there, there were three active television stations to cover the news and also two terrific newspapers. So um, it was an exciting place to grow up and be a journalist. A young John Siegenthaler, did he know what he wanted to do? No, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career. I had no idea. I mean, um, I was fascinated with journalism, interested a bit, but I didn't grow up saying, I want to be a journalist. I didn't grow up saying, you know, I want to be in television news. It was a process. I still think that um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be when I grow up. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure it out, but uh, somehow I've been in journalism for more than 30 years, um, and um, it's a comfortable place for me. Your dad was a champion in the civil rights movement, but also a titan in journalism. Did that have any influence on journalism as your career? My father never pushed me into journalism and never pushed me to be a journalist. Um, but, you know, I mean, I grew up in a house where you talked about what was on the front page of the newspaper because he was the editor of the newspaper. And I heard the stories of reporters who had gone out on assignment. Um, that was exciting stuff. And I got to spend time as a young kid at the paper itself in the newsroom where, where journalists uh, hone their craft. Um, so that was exciting to me. And that I, somehow I caught the bug, I'm sure, at a young age. Um, and it, uh, and then it really got to me later on in my life. What was that moment later in your life, whether it be in Nashville or Seattle, that you thought, you know what, this is it. This is what I want to do. Well, I mean, at some point when I was uh, working at a, my first television station, I realized that um, I was excited by what was going on there. And, and my father was in the newspaper business, but television was more media. Television was, uh, I thought, more exciting and more interesting. And you could use sound and pictures to tell stories that you couldn't on, in the newspapers. So I, I, there was no, you know, gotcha moment when I suddenly said, this is it. But, I, but um, I knew at some point in my early career that I wanted to work as a journalist on television. So you go to school, Duke University, correct? Right. Graduate, time for you to get a Big boy job, as some may call it. How do you end up in the Nashville news scene? I, I mean, I, I, I begged a news director to give me a job as a gopher at a TV station, and I worked uh, as a writer later on and an associate producer, and I, I ran the Chiron machine, which generates the characters on the screen. I, I worked um, as a weekend producer, and I finally convinced a news director in town to, to uh, try me as a reporter and to send me out on an assignment. And uh, after begging and pleading, he finally did, and, and uh, uh, eventually I was able to convince him to hire me as a full-time reporter. Was it difficult reporting on your hometown of Nashville? I feel like those emotions must get tied up in a story at some point. Reporters who were born and raised in a community who spend a good portion of their career uh, have a vested interest in trying to make the community better in some ways and try and share the information that citizens need to make important choices about um, what their community is going to be like and, how, and what their, the future of their community is going to be. And I, you know, I, I was invested in that town and, and uh, invested in that community and, and um, uh, I think it's important for journalists to, to get out in the community and understand it and know about it and not just um, spend a few, a, a few a couple of years there and, and move on. So you were in Nashville for a considerable amount of time, yeah. and then you moved to Seattle and started right. doing news in Seattle. How and why did you make that move? Well, Seattle changed my life in a number of ways. I moved on up in my career to a to bigger market and uh, an interesting place, and I love the city of Seattle, but I also met my wife in Seattle, who was a journalist there. We, we actually anchored the newscast together for a period of time. Um, so Seattle changed my, my life in a big way and a, and a great way. What was the difference for you, at least, covering news between Nashville and Seattle? Each community has, has issues they care about. Um, and, but I covered the police beat, I covered uh, school board, I, I covered uh, city council and the mayor's office, I covered environmental stories. 
uh, in both communities. I mean, m you know, many communities in America have their own individual issues, but in many ways they're, they're sim similar and the same. There are many young journalists who will be watching this, and they want to one day be sitting where you sit or in front of a camera like you are. What advice do you have for them? I often tell the young journalists or the students that I talk to who ask me, um, you know, what do I need to learn? What do I need to do to get a job in journalism? And I, and I tell them nowadays that they need to know all aspects of, of journalism and all the skills. It used to be you could be a writer or you could be uh, on camera, you know, or you could be an anchor um, or a producer. But now, in many ways, because of technology, um, I think the, the journalist of the future has to do all those things. Your father, he won this award back in 1999. Right. Um, you're the only father-son duo award winners. How does that make you feel? Well, this is incredibly meaningful for me um, to receive this award. The fact that my father received it, I was, uh, I was there when he received that award, and I was very proud of him. I know he'd be very proud of me. One of the things he passed on to me um, was his passion for journalism, his passion for First Amendment and free speech rights, his passion um, uh, for open meetings and, and access uh, to governments, um, United States governments and transparency in governments around the world. Your father's legacy, I've seen so many people come in here and talk to you about him, and I can't help but be touched myself. Yeah. How do you think he'll be remembered 50 years from now? My father helped shine a spotlight on issues that matter to him, on civil rights, um, on First Amendment rights. And um, those are probably the two uh, greatest achievements of his life in many ways, was to shine a, a bright light on those issues and, and to, uh, to try to work for a country that um, is colorblind, to try to work for a, a country, to work toward a, the goal of making a country um, better at sharing information and not being so secret about keeping information from the public. That's what he cared about and that's what he lived for and that's what he wrote about. Do you ever feel like you're carrying on his torch or his message? No, he never, he never put that burden on me. He never put that burden on me. Whatever, whatever he passed on to me is in, is in me, and, and uh, I speak about it and will speak about it in the future, but no.